So, good evening, everyone. It, is it loud enough? Yeah. Let me know. Just say. <laughs> okay. So it's a blessing to be here for us. I remember when Billy was saying earlier about the very day we talked to Eduardo, we were in Baltimore in the first symposium of the United States, 2007. It was April the 15th, the day after of the symposium. We were having our lunch together. Eduardo was sitting on my right, and he was sharing about his ideas, his inspirations. And I was actually very happily surprised when he said, you know what? I feel I have to go back, talk to my friends, and we have to put the efforts to do the group in English. I said, really? No, we were happily surprised. We were like, you sure? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. And a month later, he contacted us and said, I talked to them, to Elder, to Angie, Abilio, and Joao, and many others, and we're going to do it. It's like, man, these people are really the real deal. <laughs> Because to have an inspiration, really make it happen, that's how the workers of the new millennium are. They get inspired and they do it. They're not sponsored by Nike, <laughs> but they really do it. <laughs> they really do it. And here we are with the efforts of both planes in this blessed home of spiritism in the core, the center of New York. When um, Fred was playing the violin to prepare the environment, the mentors were sharing that the gathering is always into planes. And today is a celebration of two worlds as well. We can probably not imagine how much the good spirits have worked to sustain, to encourage, and to inspire. But we owe a great deal to them. And as uh, Fred was playing the beautiful, well-played song, they said, the workers of the third millennium are entering. The workers of the third millennium are entering the room. And it made me remind, remember of a passage that happened to Chico Xavier. When Chico Xavier, at the beginning of his, the great Brazilian medium, at the beginning of his works, when nobody understood of spiritism in Brazil whatsoever, he was doing meetings in his center by himself because a lot of his companions had to leave, to move to other places, and he was left alone physically. Emmanuel said, because he was not going to do the meeting, but Emmanuel said, you have to do it for the discarnates. So he opened Chico's vision. And the description was that there was like an audience, well, almost like a stadium audience. Can you imagine? There waiting for the reading of the message so they could also be instructed. Later, Chico Xavier revealed to people who were very close to him that some of those spirits who were discarnated and receiving those teachings reincarnated and became great spiritist workers. Here we have many incarnates, but many more discarnates. 
who are also being prepared to settle new grounds on the earth because the earth is progressing and one of the things we know is happening is our understanding about our health our health is beyond the physical I'm not healthy because I go to the doctor, do all the physical, and the whole physical, and come and say everything's fine. But emotionally, my heart is broken. My relationships are broken. There is no complete health there. Physically, I may be doing very well, but emotionally, I need a boost, maintenance. It was very much the case of a grandfather who wrote a letter to a Spanish spiritist medium, renowned Spanish spiritist medium of the 20th century, Amalia Domingo Soler. Amalia was very devoted, like Chico, but in Spain at another time. And people heard of her, and they used to write her letters or knock on her door asking for a greater understanding. Not like readings per se, like a psychic, but deeper. They wanted a spiritist clarification. Like Angie said, we need to study. Because then, it's not like I think, as she said, but I know. And she's right. Because Amalia would bring the knowledge to make people feel sure about themselves in life. One day she received a letter, now it's digital, but at the time it wasn't digital. But this is in Spanish, in a book that is uh, named Hechos que Prueben. You can download the PDF if you know Spanish. If you know English, it's not in English yet. But we pray somebody's going to translate one day. And there is a book in Portuguese. In Portuguese, they published with the title Reencarnação e Vida. It's fascinating because it talks about reincarnation in life. It talks about what we go through. So she received a letter of a grandfather who was doing well but he was not fully balanced. Why? He says in the letter to Amalia, it's been nine years that my granddaughter is in a psychiatric hospital. How many of us are well, but we're not complete because a loved one is troubled? That is a part of our health. As Chico said, everything that matters in life is our relationships. And he says to Amalia, she has 13, she's 13 years of age, and her, stay, her status is the, the worst. She is probably vegetating in life. She cannot move. She's disabled. She cannot listen, she is deaf. She cannot speak. She cannot even express a single feeling in any way it means. For me, it's heartbroken, heartbreaking. I can't live my life seeing my granddaughter this way. So I ask you, Amalia, because I wish I could take care of her, but I can't because I'm no expert. I beg you, he said to Amalia, please tell me, if you can, why this is happening and why I feel so troubled by having my granddaughter going through this experience. For him, it was as if his life was missing in itself. 
how many of us experience the same? Because of a son or a daughter, friends come to us and say, well, that's their choice, but in deep inside, there is a missing piece of our hearts. We can't focus in our lives. Or a father and a mother are not balanced and we feel like everything else in our lives is well, but because of that, our life feels like stagnated. That's how he was feeling. So Amalia prayed. That's what we need to do when somebody comes and asks us for help. We pray because we don't know. Do we know? We don't. But we pray. She prayed and the spirit of her mentor came and said, Yes, Amalia, your anxiety to help him and your perplexity regarding the, the story you heard are true because his life is complicated and he says this girl that is paralyzed today that cannot listen cannot speak cannot even compile a thought or express a feeling cannot walk in the past she was a great celebrity in her community she was born in Spain a previous life and was a man. She was a man who did a lot of bad things. She, he was an outlaw. We watch these movies like the Jesse James story. Oh, so cute. But this is the Jesse James of Spain. It's not cute because on the behind the scenes, there is a lot of problem. But like Jesse James, this man was charismatic, really knew how to convince, very assertive, convincing in whatever he was proposing. Almost like a, a godfather, the mafia, he had his group. He would lead and command to rob and steal and to kill whenever needed. He was a very arrogant man, but very charming and uh, like an angel, the spirits say. And one day, as he was Stopping by at a certain city, he conquered the heart of this girl who came from a good family. She fell in love, but the family, do you think the family would allow him to take her in marriage? He didn't want to get married, that's the reality. We all knew it. The family knew it, said no way. What did he do? Convince her to run away with him, and she did. Later, this girl realized she made a mistake because he, he didn't want to take her seriously. He had other girls, but she was very religious. At the time in Spain, she was Catholic. And she started praying, going to the church, praying that he changed his heart. And started talking to him every day about God and Jesus and good behavior. So you can imagine how he felt. So he stopped talking to her about his plans. One day, he put together a whole plot to go to another city, rob, steal, kill. Didn't say anything to her. At the end of the job, he got one of his friends and said, look, now that we're done here, we've got enough money, we need to go to another city. You go there, take care of her. 
And the man said, but she's so good to you, but I can't deal with this. The preaching, I can't. I don't care, just go there and finish with her. And that's what happened. She discarnated in a tragic way. When she realized she was in the afterlife, surprise to all of us, she wasn't feeling hatred. She loved him so much, because we often think that everybody whom we hurt is going to hate us. Thank God, not all of them. <laughs> Many really are better, so much better than us, that they don't hate us. She didn't either. So she actually prayed to God. And as the mentor says, which is quite interesting, the words, and I take this more literally because I can't recall everything, she says, the mentor said, her love was so immense that no matter what happened, she wanted to sacrifice for him. So she actually says to the higher spirits, no matter what happens, I want to be by his side until he changes. It doesn't matter if God makes me his mother or sister or spouse or daughter no matter the parental relationships or the relative relationships the blood ties i want to be with him to guide his pathway to god thank god there are many spirits like this in our lives the guardian angels and many protecting spirits, family spirits, who want to be with us and help us no matter what. Sometimes we even want to push them away, like, I don't deserve to be loved. They're like, yes, you do, because God made you to be loved and to love. They keep insisting. So she asked, she was granted the opportunity, they reincarnated, because soon after, soon after he died, in a tragic way, spent a long time in the lower zones, as we know, and then he was prepared to be reincarnated. In this life, that man is the granddaughter, the lady, the angelic lady, reincarnated as the grandfather. The grandfather. There the mentors explain to Amalia why he feels so unhealthy by experience her unhealthiness because she's connected emotionally. The affection is true. In their case, reincarnation becomes the true and very best pathway to renew ourselves. Right now on the earth, we are reincarnated. Who knows our previous lives? Do you know your previous lives? Maybe. If I get like a magnifying glass, and look at my heart, I probably have an idea. The spirits say in the gospel, by observing my tendencies today, I have a glimpse of whom I was or I had been in the past. Because we were worse than today, that's a sure thing. And it's a good thing that we were worse than today. Because if we were better and then we got worse, we were regressing, but we never regress, say the spirits in the spirit's book. It makes sense. Everything in nature progresses. But in the past, we were worse. Can you imagine if today you say, my worst vice is impatience. Now imagine a hundred years ago, two hundred, a thousand years ago, 
What had we done due to our impatience? I don't want to know. We better not know. As Chico Xavier reminds us, according to the gospel, according to spiritism, it's such a blessing not to remember. Don't go there. To maintain health, we don't need to remember the past. Except in extreme cases. But majority of us don't need to know. Because if we knew, we would be stagnated. How many of us are living right now and we are not progressing in some relationships because we cannot forget certain things? We wish we could forget, but we can't. Now imagine if we, we could recall everything. So Spiritism is telling us, leave it alone. In his case, it pertained to the whole case that he was granted an opportunity to know. Something that would really give him encouragement to keep on loving that granddaughter and be patient knowing that life goes on because he says he loves the Spiritism and he found in the Spiritism the solutions for many of his problems. But why now on the earth we have such a hard time such a hard time beginning anew every day that we don't forget our own mistakes and don't forgive our own selves. Guilt plays a role, escalates, inner anger is introjected and we fall into depression. And depression rates are escalating. If we take a look at the, the numbers, please, thank you. <coughs> they say in 2030, depression will be the second cause of disease. I mean, 2013, 2030, we're close. Yes, thank you, thank you. So we have time to reverse it to understand what is on the behind the scenes of this mental disorder that is so debilitating nowadays. Knowing the root cause of it and how spiritism can help us maintain health and even give us another boost. But this is not the only problem regarding our mental stability. If we take a look at some other numbers, just out of curiosity, I don't have them here. Other diseases, like for example, autism. Autism is escalating as well. And there is a common ground between depression and autism, more than we imagine. Though science cannot still explain, cannot yet explain, we understand spiritually the behind the scenes of autism. 20 years ago, one, one in 10,000 kids would be diagnosed with autism. Now, one in 150. It's devastating, especially in the United States. It's devastating. Why is this happening? What is on the behind the scenes? Because like this grandfather, we see our children like this. What do we do? How do we deal with it? How do we reach out to them? Why is this happening? So going straight to the point, without wasting our times, we could talk a lot more scientifically, but this is a celebration of spiritism. We're going to go straight to the spiritual causes of our infirmities. If we go b to the book, Evolution into Worlds, we are going to learn like, that previous lives really play a major role in creating predispositions to disease. It's like we are predisposed 
to develop it. There was a case of Chico Xavier, true case, his brother, when he started, when he became a spiritist at 17, one of the brothers who truly helped Chico Xavier was José Xavier, José Xavier, however we want to pronounce it. He was a great brother. He was older than Chico. He was quite supportive of the work and helped Chico Xavier mostly, because people talk about Chico Xavier communicating with the higher spirits, but they forget that Chico Xavier is a good medium, was also the medium through whom the good spirits rescued disturbing spirits. It's the work of this obsession that we talk about in Spiritist Center. It's one of the highest forms of charity because the higher spirits can come and rescue these spirits, but it's very hard. The mechanisms to make it happen, they need our help as the incarnate mediums. Chico Xavier not only communicated with the enlightened ones, but he served as the messenger to help those spirits that were suffering and were earthbound. It's what we call spirit release therapy in the United Kingdom. Here we call this obsession in spiritism. It's about the spirit attachment, obsessions, and how we release them. They are so common on earth that Allan Kardec in the medium's book, chapter 23, dedicates the whole chapter and says, amongst the three types of obsession, there is one that we classify as simple, common, because it's so common that Andre Lewis, in his books, are gonna say, is gonna say, majority of people on earth go through obsession, spirit attachments. We need to know why. We need to understand because sometimes our lives are complicated because of this persistent negative influence in our lives. That's what obsession is. It's when there is another mind sending that negative thought constantly to us. Because we are not perfect, we fall and we give in. And when we least expect, we're imprisoned and we are taken to psychiatric hospitals. Besides that point, which you can study in the Medium's Book session, that is coming on Mondays <laughs> with Angie, Chico Xavier got to know from his brother, Jose. He discarnated after having a stroke, quite young. He was in his 40s when he discarnated. Chico was devastated, the whole family, but that's how it is. One day he appeared to Chico in spirit and said, Chico, I need to tell you something. You remember when I had those headaches? Yes, I do. <laughs> you often had those migraines and headaches. Yeah, when I came here, can you believe I kept on feeling them? Because we think when we discarnate, we're going not to feel anything. No pain whatsoever, but we forget we have a spiritual body. And that's the source of everything. Pain is not processed in the physical body. As a pain scientist, I study the neurobiology of pain. I wonder how scientists are one day going to find that out. Because there's a big discussion nowadays that we don't need the higher centers of the brain to perceive pain. We only need the peripheral system. And the spirits are telling not only the higher areas of brain, we need the spiritual brain to feel pain. So we're still far from going to the source of our disturbances. Jose said, Chico, I kept feeling these headaches and prayed so much because I couldn't understand I was discarnated. 
One day, God is so merciful. He sent me an illuminated spirit that said two things. One, I'm going to introduce you to the mentor of the Spirit Center you and Chico founded. The first center they founded was named after Luis Gonzaga. They thought that that was the original name of the King Louis of France. But they didn't know that that was not King Louis' name. The mentor was actually an Italian patron of youth, Luis Gonzaga. In the spiritual realm, an illuminated spirit. He said, tonight, we're going to see him passing by as he is in a mission. When Jose saw that spirit so illuminated, he knelt down in tears. Luis Gonzaga approached him, touched his head. From that moment on, no headaches anymore. Wow, what happened there? But it didn't stop there. This friend, this spirit friend said to Jose, I am allowed to share something else with you, Jose. If you had not sacrificed your life to do the work with Chico Xavier in these obsession meetings, The reincarnatory plan, when you last reincarnated as Jose, was that you were going to die old and mad in a hospital. You were going to grow into madness. Because you surrender into helping and reaching out to others, the good spirits were so merciful you only had a stroke and you discarnated. But the pain you were still feeling is still something that remains in your spiritual body, things of previous lives. How often we wake up thinking we deserve the world. We do, because we are heirs of God. God is abundant in love. But we have debts. I know some people don't like this word, debts, right? Who likes that? I don't have that. I already have enough bills to pay besides my spiritual bills, <laughs> right? Can you imagine material bills, spiritual bills? It's a lot of bills. But the spiritual bills are the ones that are important. Those we can't forget. We have to wake up every day thinking, I need to be diligent and pay it off. Demanding less of the world, giving more of ourselves every day. Going above and beyond what we think we are capable. Earlier in the meeting, we were recalling when we were watching a show by the Cirque du Soleil. You've watched it. If not, Google. Watch online. It's unbelievable. It's beyond the show. It's about what the human body can do when it's under great discipline. Now, those are human beings like us. Under discipline, we can do miracles. We think we can't, but we can. Under discipline, under consistency, being diligent. That's what happened to Jose. He could have said, like, there was a sister of Chico Xavier. She didn't care about spiritism. Chico never bothered conf convincing her, preaching, indoctrinating her. 
He loved her. She wanted to be Catholic. Fine, that's okay. There is no problem. But Jose gave in at a time when being a spiritist was dangerous in Brazil. So dangerous that people created plots to kill you if you were a spiritist. It happened to Chico. It happened to Euripides Barsanufo. It happened to families in my family as well, as my great-great-grandfather. They have stories to tell about how it was risky to be spiritist at the time. Now it's easy, especially in America, the land of the free. We're free. We can be seated here talking about this, people respect and nobody's going to do anything against us. But Jose really went beyond his limits. He conquered something in return he never expected, changed even the genetic predisposition. Let us get to know more about how this happens by going to the understanding on our health, how we become predisposed to diseases, mentally, spiritually, physically. What is a morbid predisposition? Let us see. It's to be susceptible to disease. Who is not? We all are. Why? Why we may have, we go into an airplane, somebody's coughing, there are 150 passengers, we land, go home, and then we start coughing. But our husband is not. Our child is not. Why us? Why did I get to be susceptible to that condition? Let us get to know what Spiritism says. In the book Evolution into Worlds, which is already translated into English and to be published soon by the International Spiritist Council, it says that the source of our infirmities of long duration are in our spiritual body. Uh-huh. So our spiritual body, who in this room, in both realms know because the ones in the other realm, they know they have a spiritual body. Who in this room doesn't have a spiritual body? Let me know. You do? You ha are you sure you have a spiritual body? A hundred percent. Have you seen it? What is the proof? Feel it. How? How do you know you have a spiritual body? Uh, we want to know. How are you assured that you have a spiritual body? By faith. By faith? Is there another way? By feeling? By dreaming, when you dream, have dreams, what else? Okay, now we're getting warmer. <laughs> that direction, the physical body and the spiritual, what is their relationship? Claude Bernard, the father of physiology, he observed how our body functions, he concluded. There must be an organizing model that is not physical, that is sustaining this. Otherwise, each time our cells renew themselves, because we know the cells of the body, they die, other ones are born in a life, a long lifetime, many times they were renewed. But we don't change, good and bad, because sometimes we want to change, we don't. But we keep that shape. So here we have the proof. Because this hand is like this, and of course it's gonna age a little bit, hopefully not too much. <laughs> hopefully with medicine we can 
delay a little bit or not just enjoy aging which is beautiful too and but it's not going to change and become Angie's hands why 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 the cells of my eyes renew themselves and they, it doesn't become another color because the spiritual body is keeping it up as the mold of the physical body so I know based on this that I have a spiritual body we call in spiritism there is spirit Claude Bernard called it as a scientist the organizing model, the biological organizing model or mold of the physical body. Whatever we name, astral body, spiritual body, perispirit, the source of our diseases are there. But question, how do we create this condition? Let us go and see what Andre Luis has to say. He says that there is a dynamic for the formation of diseases. And he says everything begins here when we make a big mistake. What? What does that mean? He says when we make a mistake and we recall that mistake, remember, we are creating diseases in our spiritual body. Oh my God, what? Let's go deeper. Let's see one more. He's gonna say, can we go back once? I forgot to say something. He says the following. In this spiritual body, when we make a mistake, a grave mistake, that our conscious, who tells the mistake is grave? Us, our conscience. The inner judge says, bad girl, bad boy, and then we say, I don't want to remember this, I want to forget about that, but then it comes again and again, the mistake. It forms in our spiritual body a module, like a crystallization of energy, vibration. And if we don't change it, when I reincarnate, it's going to appear in, a, in some form of disturbance, disease. Could be the physical body, could be my mind that is not functioning well, my emotions that are hectic, because this nodule is vibrating. So, Car Kardec comes then and reinforces that it's so true and reinforces, of course, he came before Andrea Lewis, but we reinforce ourselves knowing that the judge is within and that's the reason why it happens. And it happens at such a level that we need to reincarnate to flush that disturbance out of the spiritual body. So our understanding of health and disease in spiritism is completely different from traditional concept. Because when I experience a disease, though we don't like it, which is healthy, because it's morbid to like to be sick, but I'm not going to be desperate either, because then I will know that that disturbance of the spiritual body needs to be flushed out and the only way out is through reincarnation so i go to the doctor and the doctor says cancer i was happy until the day before that day on i become desperate of course we need to be focused but Desperation is not focused. I lose my focus when I despair. Then I understand that cancer, though we don't like it, 
is doing as a service. It's like the trash collector taking the trash out of our spiritual body, cleansing us. So some people, when they have cancer, they say, Vanessa, I go visualize an army of white cells killing the cancer cells. But the cancer cells are friends because they are doing the kind work of taking the vibration that is disturbed from the spiritual body out of our spiritual body. In a temporary body. So we should do the opposite. Be kind to the cancer cells and say, we got it. I'll help you collect this trash. We will expedite it. So you don't need to be doing this for much longer. So we are non-violent with our own selves. Because if I introject that inner violence, it's inner violence with the violence of previous mistakes. It doesn't solve. So spiritism is going to tell that I will absorb the experience as a blessing that is helping me rebalance my conscience. No wonder Chico Xavier again, when he experienced diseases, he never liked it. No, there was a time he was crying. He had tuberculosis at a time in which they didn't have much of a treatment. He was crying and crying and crying and said, and then Emmanuel came. Why are you crying, Chico? If you were us, right, <laughs> what would you say? Come on, don't you know? Chico was like, Emmanuel, I'm going to die. But Emmanuel was not desperate. And he knew Chico Xavier's vision. We think mediums have privileges. They don't. He was there and said, don't worry, Chico. Everything's going to be all right. Emmanuel left. Dr. Bezerra came in. Oh, Chico. Dr. Brazera, please do something. I don't know what to do. I'm going to die. Dr. Brazera did something, but it wasn't sufficient. Until Chico actually asked for more Mother Mary's help. And Emmanuel later brought to him the, the awareness that often he would remind Chico in the name of Mother Mary. This shall also pass. So if you visit Chico Xavier's home there, he had that statement imprinted, engraved actually, in wood, in front of his bed. So he would wake up every day and read it, reminding himself the power of affirmations, right? Reminding himself everything shall pass. This shall pass as well. Because it's temporary. As Kardec said in the book Heaven and Hell, even when we make grave mistakes, they are short lasting. Why should the rebalancing people call punishment? We don't. But the rebalancing process be everlasting. It is not. All of these great spirits were once people who made mistakes. If we read the book Sex e Destino, it's hopefully coming soon in English, Sex and Destiny. There we have the stories of two families who intertwine in their emotions and it's big drama. It's big drama there. And then we are going to learn that the mentor 
of those two families is the very person whom many centuries ago pushed those families to the abyss. It's a fascinating story. This is just a teaser. How is that possible? Because we evolve in a non-linear way. There is no such thing as I need to give that step. Whomever wants to evolve needs to do the same thing. We evolve in different ways. But he evolved so much, realized, came back, and now he's helping the families rebalance themselves. Mechanisms of rebalancing ourselves. To the point that we're going to understand a little bit better that the other causes of our diseases are in the very obsession itself. This is a picture, an illustration, it is a drawing from a pro project in Brazil, Projeto Imagem, that uh, draws the, the works of spiritist books. This is from in the domains of mediumship or in the realms of mediumship. You can buy it at thesayofamerica.com showing what happens to people when they drink. And this is just one bottle of beer, not a million. To conquer this helping hand to drink, we just need a glass, no more than that. Seriously. This is not Puritan, a Puritan mindset or hypocrisy. We're talking about laws of life. Gravity exists, though we don't see it. If I attempt to step on this chair and I don't watch out, I'm going to fall. Because that's gravity. The law of life is such that Andre Louis says, there is the law of the mental field. Whatever I think, I attract. When I am drinking, do you think you will attract an elevated spirit? Why? Why would they come? Why would an elevated spirit come when we're drinking? Unless to say, stop it. Because you're deteriorating your liver. Though you think you're getting a younger heart, but your liver is going down, downhill. Your intestine, your esophagus, your stomach is no good for you. I, in the lab, don't need more than a few drops of alcohol to dehydrate a cell. I don't need a, a whole bowl of alcohol. A few drops in a slide with a cell, I pipette it, gone, the hydration. Alcohol comes in, water out, the cell is dehydrated, dead. I'm killing myself in the physical body, basically, when I'm drinking. Bottom line, so if it is a process of death, who is with me when I am drinking? This is just the reasoning that Allan Kardec tells us to do. Reasoned faith. This is just reasoning. If science shows me that alcohol dehydrates, killing life, when I drink, I am killing cells. That's not my intention, but that's what happens then who is going to be with me? Because then I'm vibrating a process of violence against my physical body. Higher spirits won't be there to partake. Only those who are in the same mindset. It's up to us if we want to mingle with them in that manner. But the spirits are saying that our diseases are also created by this interchange with other minds in the spiritual realm. 
which can be intensified into morbid relationships that we call this fresh thank you we call spiritual obsessions these can create diseases as well to maintain health I need to be fully aware that I am constantly exchanging thoughts and feelings in two worlds. When we read the series of Andre Lewis, No Solar, who has watched the movie No Solar? Good. And life goes on. The mothers of Chico Xavier. Chico Xavier. Mesej <laughs> Menezes. We have a lot of movies now, right? That's great. The movie of the spirits. Good. <laughs> there we get to know in those books, in the movies, Andre Lewis is showing to us, he's saying, friends, from my perspective, I'm telling you, when you wake up every day or when you go to sleep, remember, you are living in two worlds. Because you are a spirit. Your body is here in the physical realm. But you are living the spiritual realm. So you're living in two worlds. You can't lose sight that living in, two, in these two worlds, there are other rules you need to know so you live a better life. Right now, my physical body is standing with baby Virginia inside the body because we spirits where are we in the spiritual realm i'm not encapsulated in this physical body thank god based on what the spirits say your physical body is seated on these chairs but you spirit you're free now we understand why nelson mandela god bless his heart may he have a free death when his time comes and we pray that it happens when the time comes because he taught us a lesson that only spiritism can explain he was feeling free in prison is that possible it is because we spirits are not inside the physical body we are free in the spiritual body that is connected to the physical but not inside of it. But the other spirits who don't have a spiritual body, they mingle with us. <coughs> they have a spiritual body. So they can connect. They connect with us through our thoughts and feelings. And you know, the good spirits love people who want to do good. So if we want to be amongst the good spirits, start doing good. They're like, oh man, I'm going to stay by her side, by his side, because they're always willing to help others. And the good spirits love to help people. So if we want their company, it's simple. But if we want the company of the earthbound spirits, simple, turn on the TV and watch CSI. Oh no, Vanessa, don't tell me that. <laughs> what is this? I can't. I never watched it. I just heard about it. Criminal Minds. Criminal minds. Soap operas. <laughs> Brazilian soap operas? No, I thought they were spiritists. Oh yeah, their spirit's just a minute. The rest is just like junk because it's all about sexuality and drama and envy and jealousy, junk food for the soul. What type of spirits will be with us at that time? I will never forget one day, we were watching TV at home. We're very diligent regarding the program, sometimes like Food Network when we can to learn how to cook, because the husband is a good cook, so. I need to learn more. <laughs> but 
HDTV to learn how to fix the home when you can. But then one day we were watching like action movie. Never forget the mentors that allowed us to see the spirits coming in. It's as if the walls don't exist and the TV becomes a Batman sign for those who understand what it means. They start coming in because they wanted to watch too. And they were not pretty. The spirits, they looked very ugly. It's like, oh man, this is what we are attracting. And then after we turn it off, we start feeling bad. We feel something is weird at home. is just action and reaction, cause and effect. Love the mental field. I think I attract like-minded minds. If we are here today, it's because we are on the same page. That's good. We made a good choice to be together because what we are learning here is for immortality. When we tell our kids and teenagers, ah, if you don't want to go to the center today, it's okay. No, it's not okay. Why? Because when they come, they learn for immortality. They're never going to lose that knowledge, that experience. It's going to prepare us for many reincarnations. Where and what do you do on earth that can prepare you for immortality at this level? Rarely in other places. If I go to a restaurant right now and I miss this opportunity, I could go later or tomorrow. But my birthday, well, I can celebrate another day. Because if I miss this opportunity for something so passing, so temporary. I'm trading in immortal gain for a passing temporary gain. If a friend calls me and says, I am in trouble now, and I say, man, I can't talk to you now, just say a prayer, whatever, because I have to deal with my work or my homework for my university, my school, whatever, I'm trading in immortal sowing for something that is temporary, that I can put on another day. But that friend who needs us now, needs us now. Sometimes I work because we want a promotion somebody is gossiping about somebody who really does not deserve to be slandered and instead of being courageous and saying friends I, I don't <coughs> think this person is like that I have seen better I, I don't I don't I think probably you're mistaken maybe you're seeing something I cannot see but we don't say anything because we're going to put our careers at risk. The same happens to Pontius Pilate. Washing his hands, he paid a price. Who are the crucified Christ in our lives? Those moments in which we could settle free people in our lives so they can live better and we don't because I don't want to get into this because I'm like I don't have anything to do with it it's none of my business and we could in a family squabble how often we could intervene make a phone call make be peacemakers. Calling and saying, come on, give, give our cousin a break. Mom, come on. 
make a phone call to my brother, <coughs> whatever the case is. But we don't because it's like, I wash my hands and it's none of my business. Those attitudes, w those behaviors will attract spirit company that are like us. Often, when we are not merciful to others, that's the more critical case. We open the doors for those who are not merciful to us. And those are the obsessors. Like the parable of the, uns the unfaithful servant, Jesus said. There was a Lord, he gave many things for everyone. But this man owed the Lord a big sum of money. The guards brought the man to the Lord, and the Lord said, you have to pay. The Lord represents our conscience. And the man said, please, forgive my debt. I don't know how to pay you. That's how we feel oftentimes. We tell our conscience, I know I made a mistake, but please give me another <coughs> chance. And the Lord is kind because we are under the law of love, not only justice, it's love and charity as well. The Lord settled the men free and better than that, without any debt, debt free. He was happy and jumping. The minute he stepped outside, he saw somebody coming by, a man that owed him some money. <coughs> he got to the man, grabbed him by the neck, and said, you owe him money. Pay me your money. The guards saw him doing that, went straight to the Lord and said, Lord, you just set him that free, and now he is unmerciful to somebody else who owes him money. The Lord said, now bring him back and said, you are an unfaithful servant. Right now you're in prison, period. What does this mean? When we are not merciful to others, we open doors to those who are not merciful to us, the obsessors. So if we want to free ourselves from the diseases that occur from this interaction, the obsessive interaction, we need to start from within. It's not in the spirit center knocking at the door saying, hey, Jesus, take this obsessor away, please. please. Because that's what happens. People are like, please take the, them away. But the power is within. I can begin by being merciful myself and forgiving those in my life that had mistaken. That's how I open the doors of my own freedom. Otherwise, I will open doors to this spirit company that as they get together with us, we're going to observe that they are going to shift our vibration in the spiritual body and consequently in the physical body. So if we want to maintain our health, what do we need to do? We need to do a multidimensional approach. This multidimensional approach to maintain our health goes to these three main dimensions. We need to approach spirit, physical body, spiritual body. It's more complex than we imagine. It's not only taking vitamins, exercising, eating organic, which is very important, but it's doing the hygiene every day, but it's beyond it. Question, how do we nourish the spirit? There are people who are walking in the streets of New York, they are starving spiritually. They say, I go to my church once a week. Really? So you eat once a week? You pray once a week? 
That's how you nourish yourself, so you must be starving. Like people in Africa, spiritually starving. How often do you read good books? Oh, I don't know. I read those creepy novels, horror ones. So we are eating junk, spiritually. How often do we actually reach out to others who are in need, which is the workout of the soul? Charity, beneficence, is like going to the gym. At the beginning, it's hard. Later, we enjoy it. Sometimes we're like, oh no, not today. But it pays off. It's really good to be good. As doctor, um, Stephen Paul said two years ago in New York at an event that Mount Vernon Group, with the help of the ES Group, organized. He was proving scientifically that when we reach out to others, we're healthier. And spiritism explains why. Because we attract good spirits. When we pray, we are doing our hygiene spiritually. The mentors teach us when you take a shower, take a shower praying. Say a prayer even if it's short. Because water is a good conductor of spiritual energies, of energies. There is nothing better than this. So you're showering. Take that moment to wash the physical, the spiritual body, the mental body, as Andrea Lewis says, in a prayer of gratitude to God. And then we are maintaining this health, if not fully rebalancing it to the level that when we need to take medication, some people don't like it, right? They say, Vanessa, I don't like this antidepressants. I need to do something to stop it. But the mentors say, it's a blessing of, me of the progress of science. Abraham Lincoln himself had bipolar disorder at a time in which there was no medication. The treatments they offered were truly poisoning to his body and he still fulfilled his great mission. If he were living today, he would gladly take medication, live better to do even better than he did if it's possible to say this way. So the mentors of the spiritual realm, through Andrea Lewis, wrote in the book Evolution into Worlds, when you take a medication, don't forget that it, is, it contains in itself chemoelectrical elements that will exercise their function in our cells, stimulating its functions or correcting them. So this is the right attitude when I take a pill. It's not like, uh, uh, I don't like the taste. So we teach our kids, it's a blessing to have a medication. First, because we have the money. Second, because we have the medication, because there are diseases that have no medication whatsoever. And then when we take it, we take it with intention. Telling the elementals, because Kardec talks about the elementals of matter in the Spirit's book. Those energies, please go to the right place and do what you need to do. Thank you. Go, take it with intention and gratitude. It's going to be much better. Even our vitamins are the food we take. Leon Denis says, the great French spiritist that continued the work of Kardec, in the book Here and Hereafter, or in Portuguese, Depois da Morte, he says we should never sit down and eat a meal without raising our thoughts to God and thanking all the people who planted the food, collected it, distributed it, sold it, bought it, cooked, so we could have the meal in front of us. It's a much Buddhist thought, but said by the French spiritist Leon Denis. 
in the book here and hereafter. That's the attitude because Hippocrates said the food shall become our true remedy. Our food, when we learn to eat right and with the right attitude, instead of eating without awareness, be mindful. And in this mindfulness, we will don't need to deteriorate health. We will maintain it by eating properly with the right attitude. They say another thing that can help us maintain health by receiving the passes with the mindset that we are surrendered to the, the abundance of love and doing psychotherapy when needed. Because psychologists are friends. Psychiatrists can be friends. The trick is if we pray to God before going to see them. Pray. Two things Chico Xavier always mentioned. Before going to see a doctor or a therapist, pray. Pray that your obsessors don't interfere. Because they can come and make our diagnosis be blurry. And we talk to the doctors, they don't understand us etc. And pray that the guardian angels and the higher spirits have an easy time inspiring the doctor. So the doctor becomes our friend, our collaborator, and an instrument of the good spirits, even if they don't know anything about spirits. By the law of life, they can be inspired. And when you get into a car, Chico Xavier never got into a car. We got to know recently from somebody who really <coughs> lived a long time with Chico Xavier. He said he never got into a car or into some form of transportation without praying. Why? Because you never know who is going to be there with you. The obsessors can come in and cause accident. So he said, let us pray so we create a majority of goodness, a maioria do bem. So the guardian angels come in, because when you read the book and life goes on, isn't that true that Evelyn goes into the car to inspire Kyle, her ex-husband, to do some changes in his life? The same can happen with the obsessor. They can come in and start bleep, 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 bleep in our minds. And if you don't have a car, there is always a metro or a bus <laughs> or the streets. Hmm? Or, or? Walking, exactly. So then when we pray that, you know, we are surrounded by protection, avoiding accidents that are unnecessary, sometimes they become byproduct of our unawareness. Also, they ask us to trust always the spirit doctors. When you go to bed every night, you can do a full maintenance of your health. Don't need to wait for a physical of the physical body or for the physical body surgery, etc. Every night, we go to bed and we pray. Please, spirit friends, May my physical body stay at rest. And may, if I need any treatment, it be done. While I, as a spirit, I can be granted opportunities to learn in the schools of the spiritual realm. Or be treated in the clinics of the spiritual realm. Or be useful to others who are in need, whatever God's will is. Every day, I am keeping my health up to date, trusting that there are these spirit doctors. This is a description on chapter two of the book, Evolution Into Worlds. Andrea Lewis says that every night, if we are granted the opportunity, these spirit doctors come and rebalance our vital centers, what we call chakras, every night. 
So you see the healing in the medicine is here. It's not only Brazil, thank God, or some special places. To wrap it up now, and this is Dr. Bezerra, they say the best antidote to madness, suicide, is the work of our emotions, keeping calm and surrender to goodness to a level that our maintenance of health will finally be granted when we surrender to the great embrace of the governor of the earth. We in spirit know that there are many crises in the universe, but there is one that was assigned by God with a group of them to govern our planet. And if we surrender to the embrace of Jesus, the doctor of all doctors, we shall keep our health up to date without great difficulty. Even when diseases appear, we'll learn how to deal with them with much ease because we are going to trust that we're never abandoned, that we have what we need, and everything that is granted to us is everything that God is giving us for our progress. So when we go back to our homes, let us create in our homes the temple we need for Jesus to come and operate the maintenance of our health. We'd like to stop here and thank you very much for the opportunity. Give you a big hug on the friends of you. <laughs>